Hey all, welcome back to this short video on this uh, DIY Artnet note. Um, this will be a quick overview video of all the features this this thing packs, um, which is uh, a whole list, if I say so myself. So this Artnet note is based on an ESP32. Uh, we got one open right here, ESP32 right there, and. Yeah, this thing packs a punch for um, what it's worth. This thing outputs four outputs and uh, 16 universes. So four universes per output, which uh, allows you to send, if you use three channels per LED, almost 680 LEDs per output, which is a total of almost uh, 3,700, if I'm not mistaken, which is uh, it's a massive deal. So, great output for this little thing. Um, next to that, we got Ethernet, which is great if you use it for live uh, performances and stuff. You want the reliability of an Ethernet connection, which this thing boasts. Um, great throughput. It has a 100 megabits throughput on this W5500, which is great. And it also supports Wi-Fi. So let's say you want to just set it up without any cables or uh, yeah, it, uh, you don't, you don't, it's a small gig. So you want to rely on the Wi-Fi instead of uh, putting wires everywhere. Then this thing also supports Wi-Fi with the built-in Wi-Fi chip. If you can, you might be able to get a pro version or one with an external antenna to boost your performance and your range. So it comes with Ethernet and Wi-Fi out of the box, which is great. So when you first start this thing up uh, without anything connected, let me get some power here, without anything connected, you'll see it starts blinking in red for almost 30 seconds, which means that it's trying to connect to whatever you set it to. So if you set it to Ethernet, then it will wait for an Ethernet connection. If you set it to Wi-Fi, it will attempt to connect to the Wi-Fi right now. And after... 30 or so seconds and it's not able to connect to Wi-Fi or Ethernet, it will fire up an AP mode so you can actually connect to the node yourself with your laptop or with your um, with your phone actually and you can get into the web wizard and well change any of the settings maybe you you mistyped the password or the the wi-fi ssid so you can change it through the wi-fi ap mode and then try it yourself i'm in the process of actually changing this so um, if it doesn't find any ethernet then try to connect to wi-fi and if wi-fi fails then start up the ap mode because sometimes well you want to have it as a backup maybe one of the two so um well that's still a work in progress but you see right now it's blue which means it's in ap mode and you can connect to it through the IP address. Uh, the cable is not long enough. Let me see. So the IP address is right there. Um, yeah, and you can set up your settings. So what else makes this thing so unique? So first of all, it has over the air updates. So maybe you have this installed in a permanent location and you want to update it. You don't have to hook it up to a USB or to the Arduino IDE. You can just send a pre-compile a bin file, send it over the ethernet to this device and it'll update itself and then continue to function like you're used to. Then second of all, you can connect, you can change all the LEDs, the number of LEDs per output, how many outputs, the Artnet node's name, the start universe. Um, it's a work in progress, but RGB will be coming soon as well as the maximum brightness of the outputs as a hardware limit instead of a software limit. So you can put the maximum brightness on this little thing. And well, you can make sure that it won't go over a certain brightness, even if you push it on the VJ software, which is great. Then it supports up to 40 FPS and actually a lot more, depending on how many LEDs you put on there. Um, but most VJ software, including Resolume, will only go up to 40 FPS, which this thing will do fine which is great. Then reliability is tested at almost 99% uptime. So you might get some dropped frames here and there, but that's less than 1% over a long enough time. So um, reliability is great on this little thing. Uh, it's just a little bit of, uh, may maybe a little bit more time consuming to set up than uh, what you're used to, but if you do that, all is great. 
there's a little OLED screen that shows you the status of the connection, the Rnet node's name, the Wi-Fi and IP address uh, to connect to, which is nice. As you can see here, a little LED status light, so even from afar you can see what the status is of the little thing. It boasts a static color and RGB cycle, like a test cycle, so you can either use it for ambient lighting or use it for um, maybe test if you, see, you want to see if all your um, LED strips are working or not. Um, possibly more patterns in the future, I don't know, depends on support and demand for that feature. And of course it's fully open source, so even everything from the 3D printed files to the software to even the PCB is all open source. So you can completely reproduce this at your own cost and time, which is great. I will drop a link to the GitHub below, which where you can find all this information. Um, yeah, so that's uh, for the software. Then for the hardware, we got an ESP32, obviously, a level shifter, which uh, makes sure that the 3.3 volt signal gets um, shifted to 5 volts, which the LED strips usually expect. There's a W5500 100 megabits um, wired Ethernet connection right here. We got some capacitors to filter all the power. Uh, to prevent any voltage spikes from damaging the equipment or damaging your LED strips, which is great. All the outputs are fused, which is very important because this thing also acts as a power distribution board. So um, instead of having one connector for a power supply and one connector for a node, basically, you can have both in one, which is great. Um, there's two ways to actually get your power in here which is through a DC connector right here which supports up to 60 watts and through a screw terminal right here which supports up to 240 watts and possibly even more. Now how does this power get to the outputs you might ask? Well if we look at the bottom there are thick thin tracers um, on the bottom which are thick enough and wide enough to transport a lot of amps to all the LEDs. So pushing a lot of amps on this thing um, is very doable. Just make sure you don't do it through the DC connector because this thing heats up uh, if you use it too hard and too often. So we got a little um, test setup right here. So we got a network switch right here connected to my router and one extension going into the Artnet node. Then we got a connection to one of my own LED strips which which has 96 LEDs, WS2815, works on 12 volts, amazing strips, perfect in these aluminium profiles, very thin, very sleek. And well, let's power it up and see what happens. So as you can see, it blinked red a couple times, looking for a connection. I had to plug in my connections a little bit better. And I've got my VJ software running on the background, already set to the IP address of this thing. And as you can see, we got beautiful light coming from this thing. Uh, yeah, it's a great project. If you like soldering, if you like working on Arduino's programming, I very much invite you to help with the project, contribute, download. Uh, yeah, see what you can do with it. There's still a lot of improvements to be done. Um, I want to have individual output control because right now it's either you're controlling all the outputs with all the LEDs. So if you want to have one universe, then you have four, either one or four outputs with one universe instead of maybe output one with four universes and the fourth one with one. I don't know, a little complicated stuff, but um, it's still a work in progress. So don't expect the most perfect beginner friendly and user-friendly experience but right now it works pretty well so yeah check it out and uh well i'll see you next time Yee!